If I add myself, <laughs> uh, then I could actually talk to you all. Hey, and welcome to the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. All right. So, hope you're all doing well. I see a few new people in the chat. I believe they came over from... Brandon, the anime guy's stream, because he did send you all over here. So that's cool. Hey, Kathleen, always good to see you. Hope you're doing well. I'm, I'm just out of it. I've been out of it for about a week. So uh, let's see here. The Comic Relief Crusader, hail to you. War Monkey, hail to you. Good to see you. <laughs> All right, so just a little, you know, 
talking points at the beginning of the stream. Thank you all for being here. As many of you know, uh, or maybe not know, uh, this weekend I was traveling and I'm still out of it of sorts. And, you know, some. So, yeah, it was for a job interview and for... Uh, didn't go so well. But, you know. So, uh, because of complications, I've been out of it. I've been trying so hard to get YouTube things going on and everything. I'm glad that it is Saturday. So nice. And, um, you know, as always, a chill stream. We're going to be going through a few articles. I have a few, I have a few good articles here that I'm looking forward to reading together with you. We might do some, uh, some, you know, some weird fact or something. Um, definitely always, we, you know, lately, the last few streams, we've been doing some, some historic memes and there's a video that I would like to, uh, watch together and react to you with together with you. It's, um, it's a short video, a guy that, that, you know, I've, I've been enjoying his, his, uh, his videos. They're funny. He, uh, he takes like the Wikipedia page and translate it, translates it with the uh, Google translate bad and, uh, you know, presents that to us. I'm just getting my headphones so that we can actually watch it together. So, um, yeah, I think that'll be, it'll be, it'll be funny. That's, that's what I have to say. It will definitely be funny. So, or I hope it will. Um, just realized I, I didn't play my intro. That it doesn't matter. We had a uh, Sabatron, which is far cooler. I would say. Um, I mean, for those in the chat, you know, if there's any topics that you are interested in, in archaeology, history, aliens, paranormal, anything of that sort, uh, you know, going on right now that you want to, you know, want me to look up or talk about, definitely let me know in the chat. I'll be glad to do that. Um, for anyone who's always here, you know, same as always, you know, and, um, all right, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and share this video. Let's see. Share screen. Because you know what? I'm, go I'm going to say this. Roman history. How often do you think of the Roman Empire? Hmm. I, I did. I asked my chat this last week to uh to ask you know for, because chat main is mainly a two two women love you both great women michelle frost and kathleen whitley i asked you to ask the men in your life how often you think about the roman empire because of the trend going on on tiktok for those who are here new how often do you think of the Roman Empire. Let me know in the chat, you know, like twice a day, once a day, once every week. Maybe not at all. It'd be interesting to know. Anyway, uh, before I get into this, let's, let's, you know, this is, uh, the, this guy is, cause we're going to credit him. Strav Harv. Definitely go check out his videos. I, I absolutely love them. They're funny as hell. And if you if you like, you know, the reaction to this and you want me to do more reactions, we can do that. Definitely. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. Let's see. Uh, and also I'm over on uh, Rumble. So if you're watching over there, definitely. You know, let me know in the chat what's going on, what you think. I will definitely be over there. Keep looking back and forth. You know. So if anything, I will respond. All right. You know what? Let's go ahead and start watching this and we'll, we'll see what I have to say about it or 
<laughs> or what I think about it. it. It'll, I'm sure it'll be fun. I took Wikipedia's timeline of Roman history and ran it through Google Translate using languages with the worst translation quality. This was the result. 753 BC, according to Roman history, Rome was built. Romulus was <laughs> the founder and the first king of Rome, the founder of the Roman Empire. 752 BC, the Roman Emperor Romulus celebrates Rome's first victory since the Sabine invasion. The following year, he defeated Antimantus. <laughs> Who is Antimantus? 535 no BC, he was in front of the enemy. He. So if, if you haven't seen this guy's videos yet, definitely go, go check him out again. But he has he lore. It is so freaking funny. Like, nobody knows, you know, the, the the translation just writes, he did something, and it's like, you know, major historic events, and it's like, wow, he did it! So, the, it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole thing over on, on his channel. It's funny. But who, who knows who uh, Antimantis is? Hmm? Servius killed Tullius. 508 BC, Etruscan War. Rome did not win. <laughs> Rome War didn't BC, win! Until the... Wait, Rome didn't win! We're at the beginning of, of Rome and Rome didn't win, what? Judge decides. The ambassador spoke to the Senate about the reign of Sabinus. Choose the top drive. And look, usually I don't do video reactions. I mean, I did a video reaction to uh, oversimplified uh, Napoleon. But again, I'm, I'm still a little out of it. So, you know, this is just chill, having fun, you know, doing doing fun things, laughing. I hope you're laughing along. 496 BC, Battle of Songyang Lake. Latinos attacked Frascati and <laughs> planned to defeat Tarkin the Great. 471 BC, there was a demonstration in the court. Civil law applies. 549 BC, <laughs> you are an adult. Four, four, wow! 549 BC, you are... And 459 BC, you are an adult. <laughs> are an adult. 447 BC. This forum has been announced for three times in his career. 445 BC. Can an answer? A king can marry a commoner. 443 oh. BC. Cincinnati should pass a new law to replace the old one. It is better to maintain the father's mental health. P <laughs> asks who was the king of wisdom. Civilius Aker Milius attacked the cavalry to protect the Aurelians. He hated the Nazi army. And oh, really? Home after 21 days. Really? He hated the Nazi army and returned home after 21 days in 439 BC. Didn't know. Well, time, tra time traveling Yahtzees. That's it. It's time, time traveling Yahtzees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that would give my history teacher in high school nightmares. Yes. Yes. You know, I'm of the mind. Look, I I was born 98. Uh, not 98. 89. Germany numbers are turned around, so sorry. Get that mixed up sometimes. Um, 89. So, you know, I was a 90s kid. And I always say going to school in the 90s was possibly, you know, being a kid in the 90s was possibly one of the best things ever. But there are some things, there are some things today that I would absolutely love if I was still in school. And we could, you know, I absolutely loved history class, you know, bring this stuff up, talk about, you know, the, what we talk about here on this channel anyway. Uh, that would be so cool. And and all this stuff coming out, man, it would be fun. 
I like this version of history. You do, huh? You like he? You like you like this guy? Hmm. That's it, huh? Three ninety BC Aryan War. What? Seven BC. One day is three ninety BC and three hundred ninety BC Aryan War. We had the Aryan War. Wow. Okay. Well. Okay. Aryans have been around much longer than uh, than Hitler and uh, his uh, Yahtzees and uh, him hijacking the Aryans. I'm not too well versed in it. I watched a few YouTubers talk about it. Definitely interesting to check out. Maybe I should do that. Let me know down in the chat below if I should check it out. And if you're watching the stream afterwards, comment down below. And hey, at this point, I would like to point out, like this video, the, the stream, share it out. And yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Oh, 367 BC, again, I went to the Consulate General. 366 BC, the first consul was Publius Sexius. Ooh. BC, he <laughs> is the first player. He is the first he's player! He's first player. Okay. Although somehow he already knows about the Nazis. 2,000 <laughs> years later, 300 BC, Ogoni Law was passed to deny citizenship. 287 BC, on the other hand, the internet has problems. Individual differences. Oh! You're right about that. 267 BC, <laughs> you are looking for numbers between 4 and 10. Okay, okay, which, which numbers are we looking for? What number do you think? What number are we looking for? Hmm. Let's we'll see. Between four and ten. I'm, I'm, I'm choosing seven. Lucky seven. You are. 238 BC, war mercenaries, Catherine White. He took Sardinia and Corsica to Rome. Ooh. 228 BC, after RDO, he was taken to Rome during the Illyrian War. We have glass windows. 218 <laughs> BC, the Carthaginian <laughs> army left Carthage during World War II. Wha what? BC, First Macedonian War. Antelope captures Macedonian ships. 201 BC, Second Punic War. Carthage defeats Rome and signs a peace treaty. 10,000 tons of military equipment was provided. Really? Philip, stop fighting. <laughs> 200 BC, both. 197 BC, he established provinces and cities of Spain. 180 BC, annual laws of Wales. Oh. The minimum age and seniority of participating parents is two. <laughs> what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, ooh, hoo hoo, oh ho ho ho, oh ho. This is not yet. No, nope, not at all. What is going on in Wales, bro? Yeah, 120. See, lock, lock everyone up in Wales. You heard it here. If you're from Wales, you, you need to have your privilege checked. 51 <laughs> BC, Narbonne's wound was healed. 102 BC, the war between Rome and Rome was a tragic victory for the Teutonic and Umbrian fleet. And about 9 million soldiers and civilians were killed. Really? Jesus. 101 BC. Really? Rome fought Rome, but the winners? <laughs> This is funny. This is I'm Battle I'm loving this. I hope I hope you guys are loving this. The Roman invasion of Italy. He and King Bogolius killed thousands of Cumbrian soldiers and civilians. Really? Seventy one BC, Battle Three. Roman slaves are defeated on the banks of the Seine. Fifty <laughs> BC, Battle of France. The French Revolution is finally victorious. <laughs> really? Back during the Roman era. The French Revolution was victorious. BC, the last battle of the Roman Republic. 
Antony's army was defeated by Augustus. For I saw death. <laughs> <laughs> I saw death. I saw I death. I'm seeing dead people. 29 BC, there are many mosquitoes. 25 BC, the past. Yes. 2 AD, L. Caesar died suddenly. Huge L for Team Caesar. Yeah, AD huge 14, L. He died on Friday. He died? AD, Ptolemy Mauritanius visited Rome. No, but something you have to know about he. He has died many times, and he has been born in many different places. And he has even, he's even lost a bit, huh? And he is, has won a bit. He is overpowered. He is very strange and contradictory. But Caligula, who was plotting a new plan against the Roman Empire, was assassinated by Edmund. 41 AD. Really? Caligula was assassinated by Centurion Cassius Sharia. 46 AD. So, so he was assassinated once, they brought him back, and then he was assassinated again. Woo. Ulysses III assassinated. What's worse than being assassinated? Being assassinated twice. the Roman ruler, Lomitus. 49 AD. Really? He married Claudius Ag Agrippina, the youngest daughter of Germanicus. 50 AD. Really? Took I think that's about the third marriage I've heard about. This guy gets around a lot. I... Nero. 54 AD. He was assassinated by King Claudius Nero. Really? 58 AD. Roman Revolution... Roman army invades Armenia VI in the really? favor of the Holy Father. Tigranius, <laughs> Armenian presidential candidate, and Tiridates, <laughs> IA, Armenian bishop. 61 AD, <laughs> Battle of Watling Street. About 80,000 Irish soldiers and citizens were killed in the West Midlands. <laughs> really? Rebelled. Really? AD, for six days there was a great fire in Rome. Rome was destroyed in a great fire loss of life and property. 68 AD, Nero hides from Faunus, only to find that he has been declared an enemy of the state by the Senate. Then, he decided and ordered to destroy everything. Father <laughs> ordered to kill Aphrodite. Really? 71 AD, Rome defeated England. Rome defeated Scotland. <laughs> 77 AD, yeah. Julius Agricola, ambassador of the United Kingdom. 80 AD, Rome is burning. The Rome defeated. is burning again. 81 AD, Tito died of fever. Follow brother Dominic. 85 AD, <laughs> Agrippa is a Roman. Name. Yes, definitely go follow this guy. He's funny. Funny as hell. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm horrified. My teachers were ignorant morons. Exactly. Exactly. You know, this is history. This is true history, no jokes aside. 117 AD. Let's go back. 85 AD. Agrippa is a Roman name. 117 <laughs> yeah. AD. Yeah. Battle of Titus. The Romans captured Rodom and the rebel stronghold. He killed many people. 118 Ooh. AD. Hadrian was the king of Armenia, in addition to Assyria and Mesopotamia. Return really? your property. 132. <laughs> Bar Kokhba Rebellion. Simon Bar Kokhba rose up against the Roman Empire in Judea. Really? Believe that your people are Christ. 165. <laughs> Antony. Malaria, malaria, and plague killed about 5 million people in the Roman Empire. 194. Really? The army of Septimus Severus captured the black hole of Issus. 197 Lion Wars. 212. Antonius Caracalla's constitution granted Roman citizenship to all free citizens within the boundaries of the Roman Empire. Gypsy women have equal rights in the state. 222. He killed the Archon Heliogabalus and captured Severus. I am really? related to Alexander of Rome. 275. He was killed by priest Aurelian. 283, the brother of the deceased. 284, <laughs> I will die. <laughs> 296, Huger Rebellion. The victory of Caliph Atabad was contained and killed. 301, Diocletian was the most powerful emperor. 
the prices of most goods were fixed and fixed. 325, uh-huh. Nika's first rebellion. Nika <laughs> admits that she made Constantine Emperor Nika because Jesus is her father. What? 354, <laughs> France is dead. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace, France. France, you've died. You've died. You... Rest in peace, France. I mean, you were probably waving the white flag anyway. ...themselves against the TV attack led by Fritzen and avoided political opposition in the Eastern Danube Kingdom. 378, the Goths and the Alans defeated the Roman army east of Adrianopolis. Dead lag. 382, Gothic War. <laughs> After the Thracian War, the Roman Republic became the Goths. Really? Give freedom to my people. 406, yes. <laughs> Nationalism and violence against other nations. <laughs> oh, Take wow. The Western Roman Empire across the Rhine. Yes. 405, <laughs> Theodosi Matos died in a car accident. Did he now? 456. <laughs> yeah, he died in a car accident in 450. Civil war began. His grandfather, Rissimo, and Marion had to leave Rome. And really? 457, my grandfather died. 533, <laughs> Battle of Destruction. Byzantine forces under Belisarius retreat into the Vandal Empire. 534, <laughs> beginning of the war. Gilmore ended the war by accepting the surrender of Belize and the Galatia really? Treaty. Vandals have territory in Africa. 337, really? Sophie. Fresh me law. 358, my name is Justin. Matt. 607, <laughs> what is, Which is it? What is his real name? Justin or Matt? Just receives the ball from Fox Roma. 634, finally he turned his back on the island and headed for the old town of Raston. 640, really? Muslims conquered Egypt. Rassadun's army besieged Peru. <laughs> How did he get all the way over there? Mm, yeah. <laughs> At this time, Basil III announced the end of religion in Syria. 843, <laughs> Theodora, queen of Byzantium, is mentioned in the false religion. It is the end. The Byzantine Empire has fallen. Oh. Must cry. 1018, Bulgaria defeated the Byzantines. When the young Bulgarians declared their independence from the old <laughs> His name is Bulgarian. Really? 1124, beginning of the Green War 2. 1126. Two the Boogaloo. Green War ended when the blue ships destroyed the Greek coast and <laughs> overthrew the king. <laughs> These, like, primary colors. 1127, attack in the southern Philippines. Attack in the southern Philippines. 1129, data is rejected. 1139, Ivan II became king of Antioch. 1143, second Ivan dies. His death is the beginning of violence. 1185, <laughs> S and St. Petersburg, Bulgaria versus Paris. 1347, Basil the Great ruled Tsar John for 10 years. 1453, Battle of Constantinople, Ottoman forces enter Constantinople. Vasiliv <laughs> eleven. Death of Constantine, Paleologus, Rome has really? fallen. Fallen. That'll do. GG. Rome has fallen. <laughs> ah, that was good. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I, I was. I had fun. I hope you had fun watching it. Um, some of those dates. I like. No idea what they really meant. It was funny. This guy is pretty good. So definitely go check him out. You know, have fun watching his videos. They're funny. Laugh at him. Um, he does World War II. I think he even has a World War I. And uh, they are funny as hell. So go check him out. Definitely give this guy some love. Because we did watch his video. Pretty fun. You know what i'm gonna i am going to this video this video i am posting it go check it out over on rumble and here on on the youtube side of things 
there's the original video. Go check it out. Give it some love. Let them know that you watched it here on my channel and uh, you loved it. All right. So uh, let's see. I have some articles that we could read. Some interesting ones. I was kind of hoping for Michelle Frost to get here because she did share them. One of them, and, and I shared one with her. Definitely some interesting articles. So let's let's do this. Let's do this. Let's go over to Ancient Origins. And uh, let's see. You know, we just want to... I hate this. Recently, you needed to... I, I needed to... Get rid of the, the ad blocker here on this and... Just so many ads. I hate it. I don't I don't like it. Scientists find weirdly unfamiliar golden orb on Alaska's seafloor. Hmm. <clears throat> Definitely, you know. The legend of some Bashan River and the ten lost tribes of Israel. There's some different, some interesting things. Let, let's go ahead to news. Let's see what there is. Oh, something that came out just recently. Unearthing Italian, uh, Italy's Hidden Castles 3, Rites and Recreation in the Renaissance. Ah. Deforestation uncovers ancient megaliths in Brazilian jungle. Let, let's check that one out. But you know what? Before we do that, so we're going to check this one out. I'm going to show you the news articles that are on here. If there's a news article that you think like, oh, yes, let's let's read that. Definitely let me know. So we have the expression to shed crocodile tears has bizarre medieval origins. How this ornate saddle reflects traditional Tibetan culture. Over 40 new sites added to UNESCO's World Heritage List. Hmm. El Caracol Condundrum Secrets of Chichichen Itza Itza's famous Maya Observatory. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you're new to the channel, Know that I can't pronounce shit. I can't read worth of... I mean, I can read. And I know, you know, what I'm reading, but I can't pronounce shit. English is pretty bad. And if it gets to biblical names or, you know, Middle Eastern names or African names or, Eng you know, South American names or anything. I'm even worse than with English, <laughs> just so you know. Uh, you know what? And I just realized you have got to be kidding me. You have not seen. I've, I forgot to press on this. So this sucks. Anyway, let's go back to the top. You know, I'm definitely going to be reading this deforestation uncovers ancient megaliths. Crocodile tears, saddle, UNESCO sites, the observatory, guardians protect Hawaii's ancient plants. Mm. Unearthing Italy's hidden Renaissance castles, you know, part one or part two or whatever. I don't know. Uh, is the Hebrew inscription on this crossbow a secret code? From Sumerian gods to modern day, the long history of slavery and lost children. Oh, that one sounds kind of interesting. Oh, yeah. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to say this already. We're not yet in October, but October, I definitely want to be heavy in the monster, monster myths, in the uh, Halloween history, ghosts, paranormal. I would love to have that. So if you have any experience with uh, ghosts, definitely let me know. Contact me. And, uh... I'm going to have you on. I definitely will have you on. 
I would love to have you on. I would love to have more people on anyway, as it is. But because I was seeing this over here on the side, looking for some cap captivating articles. Looks Halloweenish. Definitely, definitely want to do that. Building a medieval replica castle using ancient techniques. If this is the castle, yeah, I, I believe this is probably the castle that I've I watched when they very first started doing this. You know, it just takes forever and I kind of lost the channel and stuff like that. So maybe, you know, might be interesting. Hunter gatherers in the Atacama Desert resorted to brutal violence. Ah. Oh. Yes, I've been looking up computer parts. Not that I can afford them. Go check out my PayPal. <laughs> Uh, how Sultan of the Ottoman Empire dined. Ooh. Unearthing Italy is the first part. Restoring 11th century temples. Sorry about that. Two out of place Roman swords dug up by Cots Worlds. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, the, this globe features mythology, science, and technology. Okay, that sounds interesting. Uh, what happened after the Black Death ended? When did the Black, uh, Black Death ended? Because I believe it went on for quite some time, you know. It wasn't just the Middle Ages, it was also Renaissance, and... I think they got it up pretty close to modern times, wasn't it? Let me check that out. You talk amongst yourselves? I'm joking. Let me know in the chat which articles you would like me to cover. Something that you're interested in. Okay, so... With a quick Google search, they're saying that... The Black Death ended 1353. Doesn't sound correct to me. Does not sound correct to me. Here's History Channel, but what can we really say about this? All right, let's let's pull it up. Okay, so this is disgusting, but we're definitely going to check it out. The plague is first documented on the Black Sea in 1347. And it's Mongols who seem to bring the plague. The Silk Road became a superhighway for disease. Coming out of Central Asia across the plains were different intersecting parts of the Silk Road. Traveling with the caravans were rats. Traveling with the rats were fleas. Traveling with the fleas in the, sort of the intestines of the fleas were parasites. And that's how plague made its first entrance with trade goods from the east into the Mediterranean world. In the Middle Ages, plague spread maybe about two kilometers per day by land. Probably going to get claimed for this. By shipping routes to major ports. It's the not claimed my, my YouTube yet, it but... It a relentless march from Italy across to France, Spain, Portugal, up to England, and then as it continued to make its way north up to Germany and to the Netherlands. These cities had all the conditions to sustain plague, the filth, the squalor, and then you had this massive number of people all packed together. 
in these small dwellings and it was the exact sort of situation you would want if you were trying to cause a plague epidemic. This plague was an absolute horror for our species. Roughly two-thirds of the population of Europe was, was simply eliminated. The world would seem as though it were coming to an end. People start turning to the church to ask for the yeah. hand of God. And it strikes priests and bishops and clerics just as much as it strikes others. Civil law broke down. There was no way to administer a city in these conditions. It was mass hysteria and mass fear. At the end of the day, although the plague is an absolutely horrible condition, it sets the stage for new thinking. The plague had a, a deep effect on human civilization because the structure of society changed. The feudal society is broken down. People who once were peasants can now possibly become merchants. Mm. History is so fundamentally changed by the plague. I would make the argument that disease is probably one of the few greatest forces of human history. A lot of death, a lot of, a lot of people died, so. You know, but yeah, Kathleen, yeah, since I, since I did go to this, what happened after the, uh, the, well, we're going to do that, which it's also basically a video, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, see more commercials. I hate it. More ads. Uh. Is this just an advertisement or is this leading to the video? Another ad. Maybe this here is the video that they want to talk about. All right, so what happened after the Black Death ended? After the Black Death is devastating toll on Europe. Survivors faced daunting challenges. The plague's aftermath brought about a stark transformation. The immediate impact was an economic crisis, with soaring food prices and scarce resources. Burial shrouds became exorbitant, and craftsmen shuddered their workshops. However, as the deaths subsided, a labor shortage emerged, leading to a surge in wages. Survivors inherited wealth, and even the destitute found themselves suddenly affluent. The newfound prosperity manifested in lavish clothing and possessions, yet the uh, Psychological scars ran deep. Survivor guilt haunted those who had witnessed the plague's horrors. Patriarch Petrarch Petrarch Petrarch? I don't know. An Italian poet laminated the suffering, questioning if such a calamity had ever occurred before. Many times. Maybe not the same, but yeah. Our humans uh, been bottlenecked quite along. If if you're you know a fan of of this channel and you've watched and maybe you've seen the the Bible stories that I do on Sundays, um, you know, we've we've had a discussion about what happens if the if human you know society has a bottleneck and there are only so many humans and. Uh, that indeed, and in, even in the Bible, that uh, incest is a thing. Kind of gross thinking about it, but you know, it was a thing, and it was okay. 
the plague's aftermath also reshaped social structures. Peasants, empowered by higher wages, demanded better conditions and challenged the feudal system. Authorities, fearing social upheaval, passed laws to suppress wage increases, leading to unrest and rebellions. Europeans grappled with understanding the plague's cause, ranging from celestial influences to divine punishment. Medical sciences uh, struggled to help the afflicted, as doctors perished alongside their patients. Nonetheless, the crisis spurred innovations like quarantines and protective attire, laying the foundation for modern disease control. Ultimately, while the Black Death brought immense tragedy, it also catalyzed profound societal changes in the Renaissance, driving by a determination to rebuild and improve. Interesting. What happened after the Black Death? So let's, let you yeah, know, we'll watch it. But uh, definitely, Robbie Mitchell, thank you for your, your article. Very the interesting. The Black Death devastated Europe. Ooh, 11 minutes. Yeah, let's do it. Let's let, you know, we're, we're going to do it. That's fine. Let's make sure we have some. The Black Death devastated Europe, claiming 25 million lives and up to 80% of the population in some cities. Survivors of the plague, which lasted from approximately yeah. 1347 to 1353. You're right, struggled Kathy. Struggled with skyrocketing food prices, psychological torment and survivor guilt. So, today, we're going to take a look at what happened after the Black Death wiped out more than half of Europe's population. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other plague stories you would like to hear about. Okay, let's go back to when the world was recovering from a devastating... Here are we. Yeah, definitely go check out uh, Weird History. I'm sub to them. I, I like watching their, uh, their videos. ...plague. If you can imagine such a thing happening. When the Black Death struck Europe in the 1340s, it wiped out 60% of the population. But that was only the first devastating effect of the plague. Those that survived saw food prices skyrocket. One Florentine chronicler wrote, the foodstuff suitable for the sick, cakes and sugar, reached outrageous prices. Chicken and other poultry were unbelievably expensive. And it wasn't just the food that suddenly became expensive either. Burial shrouds shot up to 10 times their earlier price. Farmers abandoned their crops, which withered in the fields, and craftsmen locked up their workshops until the plague passed. However, the economic crisis, marked by rising prices and scarcity, abruptly shifted when the death stopped occurring. After that, Europe found itself facing a labor shortage and wages skyrocketed. Witnessing the deaths of family, friends, and neighbors left many of the survivors feeling quite different to uh, shutting everything down today. <clears throat> Didn't say anything. Guilty. The Italian poet Petrarch lamented in a letter to his brother, a monk who was the lone survivor out of 35 people at his monastery, I would, my brother, that I had never been born, or at least had died before these times. Petrarch doubted that the happy people of the future, who have not known these miseries, would be able to understand their suffering. He questioned whether any such thing had ever before occurred. Um, this kind, of, this kind of reminds me what he's, you know, what Petrarch is uh, thinking about is things, you know, I've thought about recently. We, you know, uh, nine eleven happened and uh have you know the people who were born after 9 11 do do they know about this how, how do they know about this um how does this fit into their you know can they feel what we feel who who witnessed it so you know physical uh, uh, what's it called philosophy Philosophy. There. Got it. the English pronunciation this time. <laughs> um, yeah. 
In what annals has it ever been read that houses were left vacant, cities deserted, the country neglected, the fields too small for the dead, and a fearful and universal solitude over the whole earth? It sounds melodramatic, but for comparison, even the recent COVID crisis has only killed a small fraction of the number of people the Black Plague killed. Those Europeans that did manage to survive benefited from... Well, let's, let's, be, let's be perfectly honest. It killed less people than the common flu. But I'm probably going to be fact-checked. I'm probably going to get a, you know... Warning on my YouTube channel, like, don't listen to this guy. He's not, I'm, I'm not a medical doctor. All right? Not a medical doctor. Just wanted to make that perfectly clear. Rising wages due to the shortage of labor. In Florence, one chronicler recalled, once the plague had finished, anybody who could get a hold of whatsoever kind of cloth or found the raw materials to make it became rich. Similarly, survivors inherited goods and wealth from their deceased family members. A person who previously had nothing could suddenly find themselves quite rich. According to the same chronicler, both men and women began to show off with clothes and horses. For peasants in particular, the plague shifted their relationship with landowners. Peasants began to demand higher wages and less restrictive conditions. With wages rising, peasants could afford better food and their life expectancy increased. Europeans of the 14th century may not have had access to modern medicine, but they knew the plague was contagious. Italian writer Boccaccio reported that the disease not only spread between people, but a plague victim's clothes could also spread the pestilence. If you watch Weird History, then you're familiar with the miasma theory, which is the ancient belief that disease can spread through bad air. Yep. Definitely. Uh, I... You know, I, I've enjoyed history a lot. I've read a lot of uh, historical novels where the Black Plague takes place. And it's very interesting. The, you know, even in those books, you don't actually, I mean, you, you ba you're, you're, you're following, you know, in, in a historic novel, you're basically following one, maybe two families. So, I mean, you see the, the devastation within those families, but never the whole picture of those. And it's interesting. Well, Europeans of the era bought into it in a big way. And accordingly, many plague remedies relied on sweet smells. Florentines took to carrying bottles of perfume on their belts and dousing their hands in vinegar. For centuries after, Europe continued experiencing plague outbreaks. Some Europeans swore by fragrant remedies as a way to ward off the plague. I mean... Vinegar? It's like almost alcohol. And, and you know, perfumes and stuff like that, that's alcohol. So I mean if you if you basically wash your hands with that shit, you know, probably even help. Despite the fact that they weren't actually effective, historically speaking. In the late 16th and early 17th centuries, some 250 years after the Black Death, Antonio de' Medici recommended carrying a satin bag of sulfur and arsenic, or wearing a metal made of mercury, to ward off disease. The Black Death spread chaos in its wake, and European rulers eager to preserve the social pecking order took an unusual tactic to keep things on track. They passed laws freezing wages. In 1349, English law set workers' wages at 1346 levels, before the plague struck. In 1351, the Statute of Laborers made it illegal for a healthy, unemployed person to refuse work. As a punishment, workers who demanded higher wages had to stand in the stocks or sometimes get branded on the face. That seems a little harsh for asking for a raise. The law explained, a great part of the people has now died. And as a result, some workers are not willing to serve unless they receive excessive wages. Why did rulers lash out at the labor force during the worst demographic crisis in European history? As wealthy landowners, many rulers identified with aristocrats who didn't want to pay more for peasants to work their land. Some rulers also suspected the newly empowered peasants might cause social upheaval, and they were right. 
Labor shortages after the plague increased overworked peasants' feelings of resentment. Yeah, but because you tried to douse it, you expedited the peasant revolt. There's been quite a few of those. As they felt taken advantage of by the landowners. In England, which lost half its population, peasants began to demand higher wages and better treatment. Ignoring the tense situation, the government levied new taxes around 1380, which spurred a rebellion. Commoners demanded reforms, and what is now known as the English Peasants' Revolt spread across the country in the summer of 1381. Their yep. request included an end to serfdom, the feudal system where peasants remained tied to the land. The king had promised reforms, but then quickly stamped out the rebellion. Many rebels lost their lives. Aristocrats complained about the revolt, as captured in the words of chronicler Jean Froissart, who wrote, it was because of the abundance and prosperity in which the common people then lived that this rebellion broke out. While Froissart sided with the nobility, he noted how the rising wages and increased standard of living spurred peasants to demand more rights. Mm -hmm. In the immediate aftermath of the plague, Europeans tried to determine its cause. Italian writer Boccaccio recorded two interesting theories. First up, the great writer claimed some people believed that the plague descended upon the human race through the influence of the heavenly bodies. A novel theory at the very least, but not everyone was buying it. And another popular opinion held that it was a punishment signifying God's righteous anger at Europeans' inequitous way of life. A group of Europe's most educated doctors comprising the medical faculty at the University of Paris suggested other causes. For example, solar and lunar eclipses were considered a possible culprit. Imagine what those people would think of human society today if they would look at the Western... If they would look at Western society and how depraved it has become. I, w I, would, I would love to know their thoughts on that and them wondering that God hasn't come down and, you know, you know, because, I mean, I think we're worse off than, than how humans were during Noah's age. Like, Noah, get the boat. Flood us. And in reference to the miasma theory, some considered the cause was earthquakes that had released poisonous air. They also suggested comets might have caused the illness. But all agreed the ultimate cause was God's wrath. And that belief was held by the most educated doctors they had. In the wake of the Black Death, Europeans, who you have to feel a little bad for at this point, also suffered from strange new diseases. One of these, if you've watched our video on it, was known as the Dancing Plague which drove men and women to dance uncontrollably for hours or days. The dancers took... Yeah, this, this, this is something that really happened, and it's, cr it's crazy to think about. Dancing yourself to death. And that's a real thing. Took to the streets in places like Aachen, Liège, and Utrecht. They danced until they collapsed groaning and complaining about how they could not stop dancing. During 1374, after living through two major outbreaks of plague, rumors swirled about a third outbreak ravaging Venice. At least one historian believes that the cause of the dancing plague was intense psychological distress, and the dancing mania was a form of mass hysteria. That being said, contemporary sources didn't mention any deaths, so the whole thing is a bit sketchy. During the Black Death, medical science could not help the dying. However, that's not the only reason they weren't much help. As one Florentine chronicler wrote, no doctors were to be found because they were dying like everybody else. Seems like a legitimate excuse. However, the devastation spurred doctors and rulers to develop new ways to prevent the spread of disease. In 1374, the city of Venice experimented with a quarantine system, which separated plague sufferers from the healthy. By 1403, the city instituted a 40-day isolation for visitors from the eastern Mediterranean. This procedure became known as the quarantena, leading to the modern word quarantine. Doctors also developed new uniforms, which covered them head to toe. It protected against infection, 
And Europeans posted plague panels on the doors of homes infected with plague to warn away healthy people. These methods help limit the devastation caused by later outbreaks and are still used to help fight the spread of disease today. Though many millions of people died, the Black Death also permanently upended Europe's social hierarchy. It changed the balance of power between rich aristocrats and peasants, allowing peasants to demand better conditions and higher wages. Prior to the devastation, the population of Europe had been on the rise. That gave the wealthy an advantage when dealing with the peasants. So wages stayed low and rents and prices stayed high. It makes you wonder, what would Europe look like if the plague had never happened? Overpopulation and poverty would have continued in serfdom, a system where only a few collected wealth and many starved, would have endured. New political theories which put more power into the hands of the common people might not have emerged, and shorter lifespans would still be the norm. While the Black Death devastated Europe, it also shaped the continent, transforming Europe's feudal agricultural society. The Italian Renaissance... Yeah, I mean... Looking at this, it, it definitely you know, it had a lot of death. It was horrible. I'm sure it was really, really bad. And and living through that, like if we would live through something like the Black Death today and know what happened, what was it, three years ago, does not, it's, it's not even close. If we would have an actual plague, an actual disease, an actual, you know, something that would happen to us, and we would witness, you know, people just dying in the streets or just, you know, perishing, you know, that would be horrifying. But who knows? Maybe, you know, if, if something like that would were to happen... People uh, in, in the future would look at it and like, you know, that saved the world. But I don't really think that that's the case today. I don't I don't think that would actually be some because um, it, anything coming out is, is manufactured in, in a lab in Wuhan, basically. Um I'm really, I'm really looking for that strike, aren't I? I have, oof, I'm putting my, my channel on danger here right now. But, um, if, if you look at, at the population growth today, if you look at Japan where there are not enough young people being born and, and the population is getting older and older not just Japan it's it's Italy it's it's Spain it's you know it's everywhere and I think a lot of places have this problem, but you, you know, and and it's it's understandable. Like I, I've said this, uh, I've said this a lot. I've you know, I've heard this a lot. In today's world, you really have to think long and hard if you want to put a child into the in, into this society. If you want to put, you know, if you want to put a child into. into this world right now. I, I At the beginning of the stream, I talked about how great it was growing up in the 90s. And, and but looking at the world today, mass migration, migration crisis, and then you have the freaking anti, uh, not antichrist, the, uh, the false prophet of a pope going out and saying, we do not have a migration crisis. Open the ports. Open the borders. Take in more. Take in more. There is no issue. Freaking, you know, 
earlier on Twitter, I, I saw a friend of mine, yeah, post something about uh, it, when when she was a kid, you, you know, you used to say things like, is the Pope Catholic? To and, and they've changed it today to, is the Pope communist? The Pope is evil, you people. And I'm, I'm getting into a rabbit hole right now. The Pope is evil. The one we have now is evil. And I don't know if you're following this, but I'm definitely going to... I have to figure out what the book is called, where to get the book. The book that the former Pope... Uh, Ratzinger wrote about his fight in Vatican City in the entire Catholic Church trying to root out evil and ultimately being defeated by evil and evil taking over I really have to I really have to figure out what the book is called that he wrote. If if you know it, let me know definitely and you know what? I think that would be a, a damn good book to read on this channel. I'm not sure if I could get in trouble for reading it out loud. But it would I think it would be interesting. Something, you know, it, it would it would it would work with uh you know the bible stories on sunday to be reading a book on that subject on this channel so let me know if that's something you would be interested in but yeah i should probably not continue down that rabbit hole let's let's finish this video and then you know i have a few more articles two i'm, I'm definitely going to get to two more articles and then we're going to do the the historic memes sought to recreate the ancient world copying the greeks and romans in an attempt to revive their greatness while the movement which began in the late 14th century led to some of history's most famous works of art it was in many ways driven by the impact of the black death francesco petrarch often considered the first humanist described the 14th century as the worst in human history in Letter to Posterity, Petrarch admitted, Our own age has always repelled me, so that, had it not been for the love of those dear to me, I should have preferred to have been born in any other period than our own. Petrarch lived through the Black Death, as did his fellow humanist Boccaccio. Like many other Italians, these writers believed they lived in a broken world, which motivated them to create something better. By turning to the classics, Italians thought they could improve their lives. And from the ashes of the Black Death, the Renaissance successfully led to a rebirth of culture and thinking. So what do you think? What part of this post-plague world seems most likely for our situation? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History. Definitely go check out Weird History. A great channel. YouTube sides is still not showing that I have a, a triangle or that I'm blocked, so... That's good. Uh, probably when when the stream is done, that's that's when I often get a block or, you know, told that it's demonetized, which I'm not making any money off of this stuff anyway. So, uh, right, let's go ahead and get over to this here. This looks very interesting. Let's clean up my browser i have too many too many um too many uh tabs open i i just saw uh sophia jones uh do they ban people here for having an opinion so Rumble is not much better than YouTube. No, 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 don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I, I'm, I'm streaming over on YouTube and on Rumble at the same time. I, I checked, uh, YouTube. No problems. 
So uh, right now, at least Rumble, I've never had an issue at all. I've never had an issue at all. So that's cool. Everything's fine. Uh, Sophia Jones. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I'm not entirely sure with the Z. Um, but yeah, over here on Rumble, you can have an opinion. So let, let, let's talk about that for a moment. Let's talk about that for a moment. Russell Brand. Look. I want to be perfectly clear. If Russell Brand actually did something, I, I'm not sure if I'm if I'm allowed to say it on YouTube. If he if he uh, did something that sounds very similar to a a type of fruit that you make wine with, if he actually did that, it's bad. And he needs to be punished for it. Period. Now, everything surrounding that, is, you know, is, is suspect at most. At best, you know, it's, it's... There are accusations against him, but there's no proof. Uh, the, the people who, who bring accusations against him are all anonymous. They don't show any proof. The only one, the only person, I guess, that there is one of these former girlfriends or something who, who says, yeah, she, she has regrets. But regretting something isn't the same as uh, what you make wine out of. So, you know, and, and in connection, you know, what I want to get at here over on Rumble, the British government uh, members of of the of Parliament, the MP, uh, who weirdly enough is connected to YouTube, has a connection to YouTube, um, wanted Rumble to ban Russell Brand. And YouTube told the British government to fuck off. Pardon my French. But from what I know, France blocks Rumble. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Great Britain is the next place where they're going to be like, okay, we're blocking you. And at the same time, every freaking European country and America and everywhere, they're talking about uh, limiting VPNs. So that you can't use a VPN to get on, on these sites. So, you know, we're turning into North Korea. Basically. Basically. Um, that was down the, the rabbit hole quite a bit. So, no, but uh, my point being, on Rumble, as far as I know, I can have my opinion, no matter what. But since I am streaming over on YouTube and Rumble at the same time, you know, I have to be careful. But, you know, if, if at ever, if ever, this channel gets striked by YouTube, or, an, or I can't do my live streams because I'm too opinionated, I'll definitely be on Rumble. And I will, I will find ways to stream. <laughs> so definitely, everyone who's tuned in, thank you. Over on Rumble, on YouTube, it doesn't matter where you are, where you're following. I'm glad that you're here. Glad that you're, you know, enjoying the stream, I hope, at least. And, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and get... I, I definitely want to get these two articles in. So, I definitely want to do that. Because these are two things I definitely was interested in. Ooh, that one looks interesting. I just got a notification. Uh -huh. That Nutty History put out a... Japan's Alexander the Great, Odo Nobunaga. That's definitely interesting. I'm going to check that video out later. <laughs> uh, 
Anonymous accusation shouldn't be considered exactly. Ah, uh, so, all right, this article. Child vampire body is found in Poland. 17th century locals feared body of youngster could come back to life, archaeological say. A woman with a silk cr uh, across her neck was found in the same cemetery. Ooh. Uh, the remains of a six-year-old child, a community feared would become would come back to life as a vampire have been discovered in Poland, partially ex exhumed and with half the body missing, archaeologists say. The 17th century Polish cemetery in the village of Pien has been the focus of historians this week after it was revealed multiple bodies had been unearthed with anti-revenant protection methods. Ooh. Myths surrounding the undead and vampires date back to as early as the 11th century in Eastern Europe. Vladimir Dracul Vlad You know, Romanian, Poland, they're close to each other. They definitely share similarities. Um, and it's not uncommon for skeletons bearing the marks of these superstitions to be unearthed. In Eastern Europe, tales of people who died and then returned to the living world several months later were rife and were often blamed for sudden deaths, accidents, or even just generally make making life more difficult, such as being held responsible for poor harvest. But the discovery of a tiny child's skeleton treated this way is believed to be the first of its kind. Wow. Okay. This is crazy. Cool, cool. Uh, th this would have been an article for October. Dang it. Dang it. The child believed to be around six years old was discovered buried face down so that if they woke, they would bite the ground rather than suck the blood from the people above them. The Times reported its foot had also was also held in padlock, which could have been to make it exit from the grave harder or to symbolize the closing of a stage and make it impossible for the child to return. But archaeologists also discovered that after burial, the body was partially exhumed and the top half removed, presumably to be destroyed. Team leader Professor Darius Polinski, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, from the, from the Nicholas Copernicus University in the nearby city of Turin, told the Times the child was clearly greatly feared. He continued, The reason for such a burial, a brutal and disgusting burial, is unknown. The grim discovery was made in the same cemetery as a woman who was buried with a slith uh, uh, pressing down on her neck, a way to ensure she would decapitate herself if she tried to rise from the dead, experts said. Interesting. Professor Polinski previously told Mail Online ways to protect against the return of the dead include cutting off the head or legs, placing the diseased face down to bite into the ground, burning them and smashing them with a stone. The sickle was not laid flat, but placed on the neck in such a way that if the deceased had tried to get up, most likely the head would have been cut off or injured. Crazy. I mean, look. There are some crazy stories out there. I'm, I'm not going to say that I believe this, but I'm also not saying that there is, you know, that, that there, there's nothing out there like this. Could be. I don't know.
I do not know, but it's definitely interesting. But I, I think, I mean, I think you probably have a case of, of, you know, a town having bad harvest after bad harvest, you know, having issues in general, uh, you know, strange deaths, everything, you know, and, and then, you know, them trying to find something to blame it on and they just don't know what. So, you know, stories of such beings of such creatures were, you know, going around and they were like, oh, yeah, definitely. Like, I always say, I don't know, something's going on, on with this article. I want to scroll down some more. I guess it won't let me. Okay, well, I guess then that's the rest of that article. Uh, anyway, but... Um, and I don't remember what I was saying. Or what I was going to say. Anyway, I find it, I find it definitely interesting. And, yes, now I remember. Like... In myths and stories and, you know, su such as this or dragons. I think that there is something to it. I would definitely say there, you know, there, there is something to it. Like it, it may not be in the exact fashion of those stories, but I mean, you can, you can think about it logically. Dragons. There are myths of dragons all around the world. Not just in medieval history, uh, uh, med medieval history, and in, in European history. There are dragons in the Asian mythos. There are dragons with, you know, ancient Native Americans. There are a lot of myths everywhere around the world. And and you know, there are myths of giants, Nephilims, from the Bible. The Bible talks about creatures that, you know, talks about the Nephilim. Talk about, they, they, the Bible talks about dragons. The Bible talks about creatures that were basically, from my understanding, were, were cross-bred with each other, making new creatures, abominations, stuff of, of devils, of demons. Um, and I think there, you know, there is, there's going to be a truth about these things, you know, especially, especially giants. Looking into giants, there are so many myths, there is so much evidence that giants, that there was a race of giants, or two races possibly even, of giants. And, you know, so, so I think something like this isn't, you know, it's not, it's not far off. It's something that could definitely happen. I think. So could there be vampires out there? I don't know. Is it something that we're going to be like, oh yeah, it's definitely like in the movie? No. It's it's not going to be like in the movies. Um, we're not talking, you know, Bigfoot. No. Bigfoot might be like in uh you know, a a uh you know, relative to, to the Nephilim. And maybe he's not, you know, maybe he's not covered in, in wool and hair. He's, you know, he's, he's wearing pelt. Cause that's what he can get. They, you know, they, they retreated to, to, uh, mountainous caves and stuff like that, you know, to get, to get out of the site, you know, Just saying that, you know, I, it's definitely an interesting topic. We should definitely do a stream about that. People need something to be angry with. 
exactly. Um, but yeah, I think this is definitely interesting. A child vampire body is found in Poland. That's very interesting indeed. And then I have another article. I was, you know, if you follow this channel, you know, we, we talk about, we talk about this a lot. Things are getting older. Like, every time there's a new discovery, you basically have to rewrite history. Because things are getting older. Oldest wooden structure discovered on border of Sambia in Tanzania. Logs shaped with sharp tools on border of river predate rise of modern humans and may have formed walkway or platform. Yes! Researchers have discovered, because this just came out just a couple of days ago. Uh, here. September 20th. They just discovered this. So this is, this is cool. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm gonna read, I'm, I'm definitely going to pronounce that. Researchers have discovered remnants of what is thought to be the world's oldest known wooden structure. An arrangement of logs on the bank of a river bordering Sambia and Tanzania. That predates the rise of modern humans. Or did it? The simple structure made by shaping two logs with sharp stone tools may have formed part of a walkway or platform for human ancestors who lived along the Calum the Calumbo River nearly 500,000 years ago. 500,000 years ago, they found a man-made structure 500,000 years ago. Things are getting older. When will mainstream historians, mainstream archaeologists, mainstream start to realize that these things happened long before we believed and that we, we have to examine history. History is not written in stone. We do not know history. We do not know our own history. Marks on the log show that they were cut, chopped, and shaped with an array of stone tools found at the site. One log, a type of bush uh, willow, overlies the other and is held in place by a large inverted U-shaped notch in its underside. When I first saw it, I thought this can't be real. The wood and the stone suggest a high level of intrigue. Technological skill and planning, said Professor Larry Barham, an archaeologist at the University of Liverpool who led the work. It could be part of a walkway or part of a foundation for a platform, he said. A platform could be used as a place to store things, to keep firewood or food dry. Or it might have been a place to sit and make things. You could put a little shelter on top and sleep there. Scientists at the University of Aberys... Please... Uh, if you're still here, Sylvia Jones, pronounce this for me, because I can't. <laughs> I, the British names are horrible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's, it's like, I'm like, you know, I, I played a, a game online that plays, you know, part, part of it plays in, in, in Europe and in, in England. And my character was in a town in Mercia called, the, the correct pronunciation is Evesham. But if I'm looking at it, I'm like, Evesham or Evesham. Like, no, no, it's Evesham. Like, 
How in the hell do you reach that conclusion when you try to read this name? <laughs> Going off on another tangent. I'm great at those, aren't I? Whew. Um, dated the structure to at least 476,000 years old from long before Homo sapiens are thought to have emerged around 300,000 years ago. Maybe, though. I mean, it, yes, of course, it could have been a, another humanoid species that built this, or it could have been, you know, early humans, you know, early Homo sapiens. Uh, the structure may have, may be the work of Homo Heidelberg Guinness, the predecessor of modern humans that lived in the region. The scientists arrived at Columbo of Falls in 2019, hoping to press on with excavations made in 2006, only to find the river had shifted course and flooded the area. Hmm. Bram's plan B involved sliding down a 30-foot cliff to a strip of beach on the Kalemba River upstream of a 700, uh, 770 foot waterfall that plunges towards Lake Tanganyika. I don't know if I pronounced it correct. There he found the first of the wooden items recovered on the trip, a digging stick dated to about 390,000 years old. Years ago. Ooh. Uh, other wooden items included a wedge, a split branch with a notch that may have formed part of a trap, and a log cut at both ends. It might be a work of sur uh, a work surface like a black and decker workbench, Barham said of the log. The findings published in Nature are remarkable because wood so rarely survives for long periods. The material at Colombo Falls was preserved by waterlogged sediments that are starved of oxygen. It may not be the beginning of the built environment, but it is the earliest time we have of people taking trees, taking charge of this material, and shaping something that has no precedent, that has no natural form to emulate, Barham said. It's a real cultural imperson uh, uh, imposition on the landscape. The site probably contains more ancient wood ob wooden objects, and Barham said the priority was to work with the Sambian government to get Colombo Falls recognized as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Dr. Sonia Harmond, an expert in early Stone Age archaeology at Stony Brook University in New York, called, the count, called it a count, bleh, groundbreaking discovery. We know so few things about the use of organic materials during the early stages of our evolution that this makes it a very wanted discovery, she said. A team is formed. <sighs> Sorry. I'm beat. Uh... Uh, where was I? Dum -da -dum -da -dum. Uh, formed of world experts and not doubt the discovery is solid. Dr. Annie Meek Milks, a paleothic archaeologist at the University of Reading, said the interlocking shaped logs were evidence of a behavioral threshold showing that as early as 476,000 years ago, humans used large-scale materials to transform their lived environments. Mm. Although quite simple in nature, the shaped and interlocking logs indicate that these humans structured their environment 
she said, while many other animals engage in such behaviors, the Colombo Falls humans made use of multiple materials, at the very least stone and wood, and possibly fire to do so. The rarity of wood preservation implies that such behaviors were more widespread than what we witness in the archaeological records, she added. Although the use of wood for tools and structures remains commonplace today, their findings provide a rare glimpse into the role that this simple material played in human evolution. This is all... Nope, that's the end of the article. So... So... That's interesting. That's cool. Uh, I love reading articles like that that point us to 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 you know having to say having to go out and say that everything is is older than what we believe. Things happened much sooner than what we believed. I I believe that the the uh, the pyramids are much older than what we are told, and that goes for many things. And there are many things that we have not discovered yet. And that's why I love articles like that coming out where there is proof where they can prove these things because it forces mainstream archaeologists and, and historians and everything like that to actually change. Uh, let's... Oh, yeah, so this is... This is uh... All right, yeah, I read through the article and then... Kathleen says, I'd really like to meet a dragon. With the, with the dragon thing earlier, like, they may have, like, every, every, every culture has a dragon myth. Now, you know, just, just looking at it pure logically, yeah, so a way to explain that without getting into deep conspiracy theories of of aliens or you know ancient ancient astronaut theories you know where where they're flying around with jets and with uh, spaceships and stuff like that and the humans seeing that even without going into that dragons could be explained by you know maybe uh, uh dinosaur bones were unearthed and they saw like the head of a dinosaur and were like, oh my God, that's a freaking dragon. Could be. I don't know. I don't know. That, but that, you know, that's just thinking about it without, you know, without trying to, you know, explain it away with, with paranormal things. Uh, there's always something true at the root of a legend. Exactly. Exactly. Um... All right, so, ah, oh, dang it. I already closed my share screen. Let's go ahead and pull this back up. Uh, there it is. There it is. Let's see. Let's, let's look at, let's look at this. Um, La Nouvelle, I don't know how to pronounce French, I, I, the only French words I know, I definitely know. I can't say them on YouTube. Sure, I shouldn't say them in public to anyone. Except for maybe to my girlfriend, you know. Be like, hey, babe. Uh, I think you know what I'm going to, you know. Sus, sus, you know that's, that's all I'm going to say to that. Uh, has one of the most fascinating stories I've ever read. Can't even tell what this. How does it feel to be the first French soldier in Paris? French? 
Senorita, we are rojos in Spaniels. Okay. No idea. Always found it interesting that the most landmark civil rights law in U.S. history was passed by the old Texas racist instead of the young Massachusetts liberal. Uh, please b b b b pass the Civil Rights Act. Man, shut your masshole ass up. What? Papist ass think he can tell us what to do. What? Whips out penis. Pass the goddamn what? Ooh, I'm not going to read that. Horrible, horrible person. Um, search your feelings. You know it to be true. The Roman Empire. The Byzantine Empire. The Holy Roman Empire. Okay, I get it. I get it. Chad. Then you got this guy. Chad for the Byzantine Empire. Fascist. Fascist. Italy. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. That one's good. That one's good. Uh, if only girls with a time machine. Bro, you are a skilled artist. Stick to your talent no matter what people say. Oh, thanks, Dre. <laughs> uh, oh, that one's good. That one's good. I like that. Yeah, st stick to your paintings. You're skilled at painting. Stick to the paintings. Don't don't get into politics. You know, don't no. Don't get into pot. Don't do that. No time to explain. Come with me. I have no idea who this woman is. Offhand. Wow. Somewhere in ancient Sparta, probably. Honey, stop. Those small boys with your army buddies and let's make some strong Spartan babies. What? Oh, oh. I get it. I I get it. I get it. Ugh. 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 Yeah, supposedly, but there's actually no proof of it. There's no proof of it whatsoever. There's no proof. No proof that the Spartans were gay. Uh, imagine actually declaring war over a site, a, a slight issue. No, Bismarck... Prov oh, wait, no, that's too... Uh, France was the aggressor in the Franco-Prussian War, yes. No, Bismarck provoked France into declaring war against Prussia in order to unify Germany. What? France was the aggressor in the Franco-Prussian War. No. Uh, hola, France. What the Republican Spaniard would play a great role in the French resistance, mostly in the South. Can you help me with my marquise? Yeah, yeah. Good luck on that, Pedro. Okay, so because I guess Spain helped the French out. Yeah, sure. Uh, Hon Hon, no, you can't base your defense strategy against the USSR on the entire destruction of West Germany with 150 kilometers range nuclear missiles. Aha, uh -huh, Platoon missiles goes boom. The French, yeah. Circus, people with disabilities, circus owners during the 1980s. Uh, during the 1800s, yes. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Circus du Freak or something like that. Isn't there like a, a thing like that? Surprised they kept a uh, ROC, a permanent member that the long when a uh, member for that long when PRC obviously controlled mainland China. Big Five UNCS in 1971. Who invited my man Blood? Bro thinks he's on the team. Okay. Don't get it. This does not look like history. 
Weird. When it's 2 a.m. at the over at the sleepover and the conversation starts getting weird. You think Hitler would fuck one of us for a chocolate bar? Oof. Oof. But we've all had weird discussions at sleepovers at 2 a.m. in the morning. And no, it wasn't gay. It was not. Um, actually, the states seceded over states' rights. What? The states' right to fucking what? Look me in the eye and repeat. That dumbass shit you just said. I'm not entirely sure what they're talking about. What is this? A crossover episode? Palpatine is given emergency powers. Julius Caesar... Write that down. Write that down. Okay, I guess so. The Toyota War, or how Gaddafi was blitzed by Chadians. I know, but he can. Toyota, I guess, I don't know. A Toyota, Star Wars. Two centuries, uh, two countries have something in common. Romania, Mongolia. Loving a mass murder that exists centuries ago. Yeah. Yeah. Was he considered a mass murderer to his own people? Uh, <laughs> Crazy, it happened twice. Yeah, you can't defeat me, the Allies, against Italy. I know, so I'm going to join you for a second time. George Bush explained he... Well, no, I don't even care. When American grifters forget that there were racially diverse societies before 1776. What? Uh, no, I'm not reading this one. That's... No. Don't let the stereotypes fool you. What everyone thinks Vikings looked like. How Vikings actually looked like. Meh. 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 Anyway. Alright. So we did a few memes. We did a few memes. Yes, I got that, Kath Kathleen. I got that it was a, a Spanish thing. Still don't know what it means. Anyway, I had fun. I hope you enjoyed today's show. Uh, if you did, you know, definitely hit that like button. Consider subscribing, you know. Hit the bell for notifications if you do. Hey, I, I really do hope that you had fun. I know I'm still out of it of sorts, although this is, I believe, one of the longer uh, shows that I've ever done. For me being out of it, and that's why I'm no longer in ca on camera. I'm just completely out of it. I just... Uh, I'm still beat. I still need a few days. But I'm getting into things. So, hey. Anyway. Thank you all for stopping by. I wanted to... A special thanks over on Rumble to... Sylvia Jones... You wonderful person. Thank you for showing up and talking in the chat. Absolutely loved it. As always, thank you, Kathleen Whitley. You are always here. I'm glad you are. To the Comic Relief Crusader, to War Monkey, and to everyone else who joined in who is just lurking. I'm glad that you came by. I'm, I'm glad that you stuck with it. I hope you enjoyed it. And until, uh, until next week. Until next week, take care. I'm gonna end. I'm gonna. I'm gonna send you off with some more uh, Sabatron.